Hi, I'm Salman Nafis and I make videos about making your videos awesome. Today's video is about the very important basics of Fusion. So whether you are starting off Fusion or probably you're coming in from After Effects, this video is going to be really beneficial for you. I'm going to share with you the things I wish I knew in this sequence when I started using Fusion. So we're going to create a very simple animation like this. And while we're creating this very simple animation, we're going to learn about the basics of Fusion. So let's jump in and let's create this animation. So anything that you want to take into Fusion, just like this clip, you wanted to do some animation or probably some tracking, you can simply select Fusion and you can take that thing into Fusion. So this is the media that is coming in from the timeline and this is what is going out to the timeline. But let's say we want to create an animation just from scratch, not on a video. So we'll go here to the effects, right? And we'll go to effects again and then we'll drag in a fusion composition. This is basically an empty fusion composition and the default length is going to be 5 seconds. So if you wanted to increase the length of any animation, you'll increase the length of this composition. So this way you'll have a longer animation. Now, I'm going to keep it to 5 seconds and let's take this to Fusion. So, I'll just jump over to Fusion and as soon as we jump in, we just find out that we just have one media out node. Basically, this is something that is going out to the timeline and we don't have anything connected to it. We see that there is a connector, there is a yellow connector that indicates that this is the input of the node in most cases and we have a square which is the output of that node. So. First things first, just like that animation, I wanted to create a gradient uh, for the background. So this is the area where you're going to find all of the commonly used nodes. So I'll go up over here and I'll drag in the background node from here. This is our background. And I'm going to connect the output of the background, which is this square, to the input of the media out. And this viewer has turned to black because the background's color is black. So if we select the background and we go up over here, we can change the color. In our case, we don't want it to be a solid color. I want it to be a gradient. So we'll select a gradient and then we can select these individual things to change the color of the gradient. So probably let's put the color around somewhere around here, I would say. And the other color, I would like it to be something like this. Okay. Then you can also move this line around and it can basically change the way the gradient looks. Now, anything that you select in the node area basically is represented in the inspector. Nodes, if you want to understand in the very basic way, they're just like layers in the edit page or probably layers in the After Effects. And also the effects that you add up in the edit page, they're also going to be represented as a single node. So once we have connected our background, I would need to create another square shape just like that animation. So for that, we will also add in another background node. So I'll drag in this background again. And this time, I'm not going to connect it right now. And you can see any node that we have, we can just come under it and we can see two dots over here. These things that you see at the bottom are left and the right views for these screens which node is being previewed in which viewer. This is a very, very helpful thing when you're creating complex things and when you preview different nodes in different viewers, just like After Effects. And you can just come up over here and you can select this. And now this background is going to be independently viewed over here in this viewer. In my case, I have these three things coming up because I have a third monitor, you know, I have a second monitor attached to it. Now let's build our shape. And for building the shape, we're going to use the masking tools. So first of all, let's give the gradient to our this background node. We'll go over here and we'll change it to gradient. Let's give it a nice color. Once we are happy with that, now we need to create that shape. So these tools that you see up over here are the masking tools that let you mask out a node. So I'm going to grab in a square or rectangle tool and I'm going to connect it to the blue input of this background. Now, blue inputs always are going to be the masking inputs. Whenever you want to mask out something, cut out something, that needs to be added in the blue input. So any node that has this input, that means it can be masked. So we're going to connect this mask to the blue input of the background. And now, you know, this is cut out. Now we can just select this and we can make it a little smaller just according to our liking. 
probably somewhere around here. We can also go ahead and we can change the corner radius to make it a little more uh, rounded at the corners. And probably I would like to reduce the width a little bit. I would also like to change the angle so that it is something like this. Now probably the height could be reduced. Something like this. I'm happy with this. Then there are a lot of other options in this masking tool, which you can, you know, try out instead of a solid. It could be, you know, something like this where you can give it a border width and where you can just change the length of that border width. And this can also be animated. But right now, in our case, I'm just going to bring the border width back to zero. Any parameter that you have changed, you can just click on this dot and it's going to bring it to the reset position. Then we'll bring it to solid again. And now we need to merge this thing that we have created, this box that we have created, which is represented by this. And we want to connect it to the background. For that thing, we will need a merge node to merge this over the background. So we're going to go ahead over here and we're going to find a merge node. We're just going to drag this merge node over here. And as you can see with this merge node, we can see three inputs. Obviously the blue one, we have talked about it. This is the masking input. Green is always going to be the foreground, right? You can keep your cursor a little longer to show that also and yellow is always going to be the background. So we're going to disconnect it by coming here to the end and we're going to connect it to the yellow input, which is going to be serving as our background. And this one, the output of the background too, needs to go in the green input. And now we're going to, you know, after merging these two together, now we're going to put them in the media out like this. So now we can see this thing merged on top of the other one. So for adding the text, what we'll do is that we'll simply come up over here to the text plus and text plus is the most common node which lets you add basic text into the footage. It has a lot of different options that you can explore. So I'm just gonna drag this text node over here. And again, I'll have to add in a merge node. Now to add in the merge node, I can simply do two things. You know, instead of adding it manually, I can keep holding shift and I can drag that between a line and it's automatically gonna add in the merge node over there right? Or what I can do is that I can just take the output of this text and I can just add it to the output of the merge and it's automatically going to add in a merge node where the text is being placed on top of the background. Now let's type in our text. So it's going to be fusion. Let's increase the size a little bit. And I would like to change the angle of the square also. So I'll go back to my mask rectangle. Let's change the angle a little bit, probably around there where it looks nice. And let's say I'm happy with this. Now what I want to do is that I want to add in a certain drop shadow behind the text so that it can be a little more prominent. So to add the drop shadow, I will have to add the drop shadow after the text, right? So I will just select the text and I can press shift and space bar and it's going to bring up this node selection tool. This node selection tool lets us search for a certain effect. We can also go over here to the effects tab and we can search for an effect over here. There are all the effects that are listed. But what we can also do is that we can we can select the text, shift space bar, and let's type in drop shadow. So there is our drop shadow. As soon as we add it, it's automatically going to connect it to the inputs. And now we can change certain settings of it. So in the drop shadow, I would like it to be a little less in distance. I would also like it to be a little less, probably something like this. And then I want the shadow strength to be a little less. So now we can just turn it off and on to see how it looks with the shadow. All right, it looks nice. Uh, another tip over here, if you want to just disable a node. So disabling a node means passing through that node. So to pass through that node, you'll just have to select that node and you'll have to press Command and P to basically disable that node. So Command P to pass through and this can disable that specific node. Now after this, what we need to do is that we need to, you know, move this text over time. So for that, we'll have to add in a transform node. Now, normally every layer in the edit page or every layer in even After Effects, they have these transform controls where you can increase the size, position or rotation of something but something that basic in Fusion needs a separate node for that. 
So we'll just go ahead after the drop shadow, we'll select drop shadow, shift spacebar, and we'll type in transform. There are two types of transform. I'm gonna use transform XF, which is a more simpler version of it. So add that, now we have a transform over here. And what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna put in some keyframes. So right at this point, probably, yep, I want the text to be looking like this. And then I'm gonna go ahead to the transform and I'm gonna put in a size keyframe over there. As soon as I've added a keyframe, you can see the representation of that keyframe over here also. As you can see, it is represented by a white line. And then we can just go back to the first point and probably we can just reduce the size all the way down. Now when we play it, the text comes up like this. Now we need to give a little bit of an animation to the square also. So we'll also add in a transform node after the square. So after background, you know, I'll just press background two, shift space bar, and I can type in transform again, and then add it. Now on this transform, I'm gonna use that same place. I put in the keyframe 150. So I'll put in a keyframe 150 over here just to keep the animations, you know, in synchrony. This number represents which frame you're at. So I'm at 50, I'm just gonna go to transform and you know, I'm gonna do two things. I'm gonna rotate it over time as we did in the first, you know, initial animation. So I'm just gonna put a size keyframe and I'm also gonna put in an angle keyframe. So now let's go back to the first point, right? And let's, you know, rotate it out a little bit, something like this. And then I would also like to reduce the size. All right, cool. So it comes in like this and then it stops. It's a very linear kind of an animation right now. Uh, you know, there's no easing going on in that. So for that, we'll open up two things, the spline editor and the keyframe editor. So the keyframe editor basically lets you change the position of the keyframes and the spline editor lets you, you know, ease out the keyframes. So now I'm gonna go to the keyframes after selecting transform, I'm gonna go to the keyframes and we can see all of these layers over here. Now, don't confuse them with layers. They're, they have nothing to do with layers. They're just like stacked up things um, coming up in the form of layers uh, and the sequence doesn't really matter. Now, in a complex project, it becomes really difficult if you see so many nodes over here in this list form. So what you can do is that you can come up over here, you can turn show only selected tools. This way, you're just gonna be able to see the tools that you have selected, just like this one, and probably we want to select this one. So press Command or Control, and then select the other one, and it's gonna show both of them. So if we open it, this one up, you know, this was the transform one, which was for the sizing of the text. So we can move the keyframes around, and now that animation is gonna be a little faster when we play, right? But I wouldn't bring it back to the same position. So this way you can edit the keyframes. And now I would like to go onto the spline. So let's put some easing on these keyframes that we have added. So let's go to the spline editor. I'm gonna go first of all to the transform one, which is, you know, it shows you the size positions. If you wanna see all of those keyframes, this is a handy tool over here, which you can select and it can show you the keyframes like that. So an easy way to put an easing on both of these keyframes is you can select them and you can press S on the keyboard to smoothen out these things from the starting and ending. But in our case, I'm just gonna create a more interesting kind of an easing. So Command Z and let's just make it a little smaller. I'm gonna raise this one up a little bit and then I'm probably gonna raise this one up. The smoother it is towards the end, the smoother your animation is gonna look like. So let's see how it looks like. So yeah, the text looks smooth. Now let's go ahead and do the same for the transform two. So I'll just turn this off, let's go over there and let's select this button. We are seeing two keyframes, one on the size and one on the angle. This is represented by this color over here. So let's do the same kind of an animation over here. I'm just gonna raise this one up a little bit. And that's it. That's the easing that we have done and it's pretty smooth towards the end. Once this is done, we can just turn off the spline editor over here. Now we've got this nice animation going on. Now one interesting thing that we can do over here is to add motion blur to the movements that are happening. 
to make it look more realistic. So all the nodes in Fusion that control the size, rotation or position of something, they also have a motion blur option in them. So all we need to do is that select this transform and we'll go to the settings over here in the inspector and there's an option for motion blur. So we can just turn it on. You can see, we can see some motion blur over here and you can increase the quality of the motion blur to make it look more natural. And you can also play around with the shutter angle. Sometimes you know, you're trying to match it with the footage motion blur. So you can change the shutter angle according to that. I'm gonna leave it to two. Uh, when you increase the quality, obviously it comes with the cost of, uh, you know, slow renders. So let's do the same on the other one. Let's go to the transfer tool and let's put that also on motion blur. And this way we can see some motion blur happening in that shot. Now, once this thing is done, we're going to add in an overlay of the fire. So this is the fire overlay that I'm gonna add over the background. So we're just gonna bring this one in over here like this and let's quickly rename it. It's coming in as media in one. I'm just gonna rename it so that we stay organized. Let's call this overlay fire. Once this thing is done, now we need to merge it before all of these things are happening. I wanna put this overlay behind the square and behind the text. So that's why I'm gonna layer it behind all of those things. So easy, I'm just gonna take the output of this overlay. I'm gonna add it to the output of the background. Automatic merge node is added. You can see some composite modes in the edit page where you can change it to add or screen or something like that. And in After Effects, you can find the blending modes. And over here, the blending modes are gonna be found in the merge node. So we'll go to the merge node and we'll find the apply mode over here and we'll select it to screen. And instantly we can now see that as an overlay right over there. We can change the blend, how much is it visible or how less is it visible. And then we can play around with other settings in the apply mode just to make it the way you want it to be. And we have our animation ready we can simply go to the edit page, render it out and see how it looks. All right, so this is how our animation looks. Now, let's say you wanted to use it just as a transparent thing on top of another video. For that, you will you know, have to remove the already made background and bring in a new background. Now, this was something that was really confusing why we would need to add in a background to make it opaque in the first place. Um, but that's how things work in Fusion. So we'll just move these things out. Let's delete the link. And we're gonna add in a new background node over here. We can add that to the merge. All right, now we have a black background. We're gonna keep it black so that we can remove the uh, background out of it. And all we need to do over here is that we just need to bring the alpha down, which is the transparency of this layer. So once the alpha is down, that means you have the same animation over top of an, a transparent background. So this way, any animation that probably you create and then you wanted it to be, uh, you know, on an opaque background as a separate thing, you can just bring in a background node and bring the alpha all the way down to do that. So let's go ahead to the edit page. Now we have that as a separate thing. We can place it over another video and this is how it plays. So I hope it helped you understand the core concepts of Fusion. I'll be making more such videos in the future. Consider subscribing this channel, give me a thumbs up and drop a comment down below and I'll see you in the next video.